There is only one real solution to America's race problem. If you want to know the truth, then watch this video. After winning World War II and learning about the Nazi Holocaust, Americans realized that they had a race problem. Blacks in the Southeast were segregated in inferior towns and communities. This needed to end. A majority of Americans wanted the Southeast to be like the rest of the country. The first step taken was to desegregate the US military. This was a good first step, but it did not end segregation in the South. The second step taken to end the race problem in the United States was Lyndon Bain Johnson's Civil Rights Act. Before we talk about the Civil Rights Act, it's important to know that Lyndon Johnson was a racist. He was not interested in actually helping blacks. The following are actual quotes by LBJ. I think I can take every Mexican in the state, in every nigga in the state. All they ever hear at election time is nigga, nigga, nigga. When I appoint a nigga to the bench, I want everyone to know he's a nigga. I can't prove it in Texas. There more niggers voting there than white. LBJ referred to the civil rights as the nigga bill. It was passed alongside his great society welfare programs. Did the nigga bill actually help blacks? Well, let's take a look. After the Civil Rights Act was passed, the following things occurred. Number one, America became much more segregated. Now the entire country was like the South. Two, blacks became much more unequal compared to whites. Number three, blacks were now disproportionately the victims of crimes. Four, blacks were now significantly overrepresented in jail and prison populations. It may be surprising that things got worse for blacks after the Civil Rights Act. Keep in mind though, this was a bill promoted by a racist. Its goal was never to help blacks. What was the point of the Civil Rights Act then? Well, remarking on his work to pass the Civil Rights Act in great society welfare programs, LBJ said, I'll have the niggas voting Democratic for the next 200 years. The Civil Rights Act politicized race in two different ways. First of all, it granted enormous social power to minority groups. Secondly, it made those groups dependent on the government in order to maintain that power. How does the Civil Rights Act grant social power to minority groups? Number one, the Civil Rights Act allows individuals or groups to sue employers, which means any person or company that has an employee, or to sue companies that provide public accommodations. Number two, if a minority is able to make a prima facie case that they were discriminated against, which could consist of simply a mere allegation of discrimination, then the employer or company is always presumed to be guilty. Number three, the burden of proof then is on the employer or company to prove in court that it was not racist. Now, the Civil Rights Act only applies to employers or to companies that provide public accommodations. But let's pretend for a second that it applied to individual people. If you could be sued for discrimination and presumed to be guilty, how would you react? You can't just say you're innocent in one of these lawsuits. You have to prove it. You would do things like the following. Number one, make sure you never said anything that might remotely be considered racist. Number two, do not associate with anyone who could be considered a racist. Number three, make sure you had plenty of minority friends that you could point to. Because in a situation like this, minorities hold more power over you, you would treat them differently and better than you would treat whites. This is how the Civil Rights Act takes social power away from whites and gives it to minority groups. So why have things gotten worse for blacks? Number one, most people use economic power to gain social power. A big reason people toil away at boring, tedious jobs is so that they can buy objects that give them status, like a new car or designer clothes. Number two, social power reduces the motivation for economic power. If you're just given social status, why work a tedious job for it? In fact, number three, high social power can end up getting negated by accepting low status employment. If you're a high social status black, 
Why are you going to compromise your social power by taking a low status job working at McDonald's? Even a middle class job could be viewed as a compromise. Blacks want to grow up to become rappers. They don't want to be Stanley from the office. Number four, a person can leverage social power to get a job they aren't qualified for. This results in employees that perform poorly, aren't able to get promoted, who end up getting fired from their jobs. These problems are made even worse by LBJ's Great Society Welfare Programs. Number one, welfare programs allow people who already have social power to avoid working. And number two, welfare programs trap people in poverty. People are not going to accept the job promotion if they're going to potentially lose thousands of dollars in welfare benefits. Now, conservatives exaggerate welfare's role in black poverty. After all, white people have the same access to the same welfare programs. The reason blacks are hurt disproportionately is because of the power incentives inherent in the Civil Rights Act. The Civil Rights Act has caused racial conflict in a culture war in this country because 1. Whites resent the loss of social power and the inequality it has caused. You see this in the constant complaining about PC woke culture. America didn't used to have this PC woke culture. It was created by the Civil Rights Act. Number two, advocating for the abolition of the Civil Rights Act would be considered racist according to PC woke culture. This has made America's race problem intractable. It can never be solved because the Civil Rights Act itself would be used to discredit any effort to solve the problem. Number three, LBJ also promoted a new immigration law that has flooded the United States with numerous new minority groups. These new immigrants realize that if they identify themselves as an oppressed people of color, then they can receive social power and privileges through the Civil Rights Act. Number four, since the Civil Rights Act was passed, it's been used successfully by several different groups to gain social power for their oppressed gender. This was done first by women, then homosexuals, and now is being used by transgendered people. People resent that this is happening, especially given the fact that the entire purpose of the Civil Rights Act was to desegregate the southeastern portion of the United States. Now, the Civil Rights Act has resulted in the following implication for whites. Number one, more minorities mean less social power for whites. Number two, Based on how the Civil Rights Act is written, whites are the only racial group banned from ever receiving its protections. This leads to number three, therefore, whites benefit from America being as white as possible. The way that the Civil Rights Act takes power away from whites and gives it to other groups incentivizes white people to become racist, to become white nationalists. After all, the more minorities living in America, the more people that exist that have social power that they can leverage against you. Now, this politicization of race has had profound negative effects on America's politics. Number one, most minorities in the United States end up becoming leftists to preserve their social power. Number two, most whites become conservative because they fear these other people are going to leverage their social power against them. We know that race is politicized in the United States because, number three, it's a myth that minorities are inherently more leftist than whites. We know this because, in America, Muslims are leftists, but if you look at the Middle East, you see that these are the most socially conservative countries on the earth. Look at anywhere in the world, Latin America, Africa, Asia, and you will find countries that are far more conservative than the United States is. Yet all of these people of color, all of the Muslims, the Asians, the Hispanics, by large margins become leftists when they enter the United States. That is because race has been politicized by the Civil Rights Act. This leads to number four. In minority-majority communities, it becomes impossible for Republicans to ever achieve an electoral victory. 
Because there's no longer any political competition, democratic institutions fail, and the local governments in these minority-majority communities become complacent and unresponsive to the problems. So what is the only solution to the race problem in America? Well, number one, we should abolish the Civil Rights Act. Because number two, segregation has ended in the South. There is no reason for a Civil Rights Act anymore. Fears that abolishing the Civil Rights Act would lead to resegregation or more discrimination are not justified. First of all, because number three, we still have the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. That ought to be good enough. And if it's not, number four, if absolutely necessary, we can pass a less racist version of the Civil Rights Act. One where the burden of proof is on the person alleging discrimination. This would require the minority to prove by a preponderance of evidence that the reason that they were fired or discriminated against was because of racism. This would avoid the presumption that everyone is constantly acting racist and therefore social power needs to be redistributed to minorities. We should also address the Great Society welfare programs. Governments should help the poor. Governments should help to reduce inequality. Therefore, we should not merely get rid of these programs, but replace them with something better. Something like, number one, universal basic income. Or number two, a New Deal-style jobs program. Abolishing the Civil Rights Act and Great Society welfare programs is the only serious solution to America's race problem. Although it would take social power away from minorities in the short term, in the long term they would be able to regain that social power as they accumulate more economic and institutional power. If we don't repeal the Civil Rights Act, the culture war will never end. America's racial problem and disparities will also never end. We will fight this culture war for forever. Please consider subscribing to this channel. The prosecution channel is all about number one, real conservatives. Number two, not conservatives. Why would someone who lives in Ecuador, that's me, be preoccupied with Israel? Because you're a conservative. And number three, never libertarians.